What we're looking at here is a cyclone gasification design that I wanted to test out. I decided to take a strong right turn for just a little while. And I'm curious as, as whether or not this process will work the way I think it might. Basically what's going to happen is we are going to modulate the intake air with this valve. And the gases will be circulated in the system. Down there is the discharge tube, which will swirl the fuel. And this is the return line, which recycles gases. And at the top here is the discharge. This here is just a burner diffuser that I'm hoping to see if we can get some combustible gas out of this. But the main principle behind the design, the reason why I'm testing it is that it would be capable of using any size fuel particle for the production or synthesis of a combustible fuel, hydrogen and carbon monoxide, basically, and a little bit of methane. So that is the objective of this test. This cork here is just stopping off the uh, vacuum attachment because this is a vacuum flask, vacuum filter flask. And I don't expect this thing to last very long at all, despite the fact this is high grade Pyrex glass here. Um, I found that the stuff doesn't behave the way that you would think it will after reading about it in text. It's still quite fragile and susceptible to heat shock. So we're going to dump a small amount of fuel in here and we're going to use a, in, or a resistance wand. I almost said induction. We're going to use a resistance heating wand to ignite the carbon inside the combustion chamber. and. We're going to see what happens. Hopefully this thing will shoot a nice blue flame out the top. Here's a quick walk around of what we got going on here. I'm just basically C-clamped to the tray here. That's some 500 degree JB Weld. There's my re return line for recirculation. There's the discharge line for the cyclone. And there is the gas discharge. The reason that screen's on there is because some gases will burn very good behind a screen. And I wanted to see if we could get a flame down inside there or maybe even just diffuse the gas coming up through there. I didn't want to leave it just a hole in there like that because then the velocity of the gas would be so high that it would diffuse with air and reach an incombustible mixture ratio and wouldn't burn. So as I said again, the main purpose of this test is to determine whether or not we can come up with a device that can make fuel very efficiently using any size particle. This is similar to a fluidized bed operation, but not quite the same. I'm thinking this will run a little bit better than a fluidized bed system because I don't need high pressure air blowers and all of that kind of jazz. This thing will basically... Um, run just like a fluidized bed system almost in the sense that it will have a large surface area of high temperature carbon which is what we want to produce a lot of gas in a small space <laughs> for anyone who may get the wild idea of attempting an experiment like this for yourself I advise you take extreme precaution as it does in fact put off a deadly amount of carbon monoxide gas so under no circumstances should you attempt this unless you have serious ventilation i have two blower fans in here i have a door open and the test will not be run for very long i also have a carbon monoxide meter in place so it would be best if you just didn't test this basically what we're going to attempt to do is ignite this charcoal using this resistance heater that's what I want to try to use as an igniter. Got to try not to burn it up. There it goes. So this thing's going to whistle a lot because of this CSST tubing, but here we go. I need more air in 
think I broke my coil again. Yes, I did. But I am lit. Gonna turn it up some. Hopefully that ignites. Gas yet. So where am I at here? Turning up the speed there. We'll let in a little more air. Right now we're doing a lot of circulating. I'm worried I'm going to put the whole thing out. Slow it down a second. I'm gonna let all air in for now. No circulation. Hopefully that'll get her lit. Things are warming up a tad. Starting at night. Okay, just for curiosity, try to get some goggles on. I'd say we're pretty good and lit. I'm going to go with some circulation. Oh, that turns it off instantly. The second I close that valve. We really start to lose it. So that's on circulation. That's on air. I'm gonna back this off now. You can see me actuating the valve. Probably gonna miss some good footage doing this, but I'm turn it up a little bit. That's on a lot of circulation there. Sign of any flammable gas. A bit more air. The velocity might be too much. There goes the glass. But we are broken at this point. See if I turn it down. I'm showing no signs of flammable gas. We did lose the beaker though. That really sucks. Do a little circulation there. Still no sign of flammable gas. Beaker. <laughs> I'm not really giving any signs of gas. Get a lot of signs of melted beaker. My JB weld is starting to fail. They're now leaking. Everywhere. I think we're going to call that a wrap. Yeah, we're done.
So, I did not get a noticeably flammable gas, but I've come across that before. And sometimes what you have to do is build a better exhaust nozzle for this to work. Fortunately, I don't think we're gonna be seeing that happen today or anytime soon. I wanted to try it in glass first, so I could see how much combustion was taking place. And from what we viewed in this video, a lot of that carbon was burning. And according to the theory I had in my mind, that should have been enough to produce some combustible gas. Unfortunately, the test device did not withstand the duration of the tests. I wasn't expecting it to. It lasted way longer than I thought it would though. Made for some interesting video, but nonetheless, maybe I didn't have enough carbon in there not exactly sure. I'm going to have to think about this one. If you have any input at all on what you think might have happened, let me know. I'm currently thinking it could have just been something as simple as my nozzle setup. I, as I said in my past testing, I've observed that an improper flare configuration will not allow combustion of the gas. Wow, this thing's like blowing up on me. A little hot so I wish I would have got shot some temperature readings on that baby we're still sitting at pretty high temps so yeah pretty freaking cool the blower didn't seem to blink an eye I mean it's barely warmed up then again it wasn't running long enough so what I was hoping to do was to be able to modulate this valve, recirculating gas, and forcing the Bowdert reaction, basically, on the cyclone. But uh, we did not observe that. So I'm going to rethink this and possibly build a metal one this time. Though I'm not sure this test justifies proceeding with this concept. I'm, Really wish I would have had several different flare designs to try. That's unfortunate. Sometimes carbon monoxide gas, if the velocity is too high, it will not burn. Like if you have it flaring out of here 100 miles an hour, it's never going to burn. It will mix up gas from the surroundings and diffuse itself to an incombustible consistency. Probably a lot of other things going on that I didn't mention there too. So there you have it. The first test of the cyclone gasification process is a failure. Was not able to achieve a flame. I was hoping to see a six foot flame rising out of this baby.